Welcome to the Billionaire Podcast today, guys. I want to introduce you, John Tallarico. He's a he's a uh, top wealth and in, in mindset coach, and uh, he's been working with me for about three months now. And I can tell you now, he's probably one of the most kind hardest, just gifted person I've ever met. And the connections he has and the Rolodexes this man has is just out of this world. He uh he works with people and I'm gonna have him speak to you on that part. But I'm gonna be I'm gonna take a little bit of the humbleness that he won't talk about that who he works with and that's he's worked with Akon, the producer. Everybody knows who he is. He's he's works in mentors under Bob Proctor and that's the program I'm in with you. And uh, I'm just gonna let you go ahead and shoot. Just go ahead and tell me your story a little bit. Yeah, no, great. Thank you, thank you, Larry, for having me on the Billionaire Podcast. It's a true honor, really, and it's been amazing to watch your growth. And uh, you're a true testament of what's possible when you decide to stop looking outside yourself and take full responsibility for where you're at and where you want to go. And so it, it's just been a privilege and an honor to see you just really soar like a rocket. And uh, me, I, I just, I've become a very good student. I've learned to understand that there's a blueprint, how the top people in the world think, act, and operate. And while we can be successful and wealthy in one uh, on one hand, those people who don't understand how they did it are really kind of an unconscious competent. They don't, it's not duplicatable and, and you can't teach that to anyone. So I set out after the, how I grew up to wanting to understand how could I achieve the success of those people that I looked up to, my mentors, people like Les Brown, people like Bob Proctor. And so I just back up and give you a real short condensed reader's version, reader's digest version of where I grew up. I grew up in Flint, Michigan kind of on the other side of the, the tracks. My parents were divorced when I was seven at a time when divorce wasn't very popular. You know, did the whole food stamps, free lunch thing. Uh, you know, had endured a couple of years uh, uh, at the hands of the woman who was entrusted to take care of me. And so that really caused a lot of internal conflict for me and drama. I started drinking at age 12, but on the outside, I was a perfect child. I didn't want anyone to know anything was wrong. And so I lived with that kind of in, inner turmoil for, for years and it was, thanks to the salvation of my grandmother, who used to make me listen to Les Brown every Sunday night, speaking at the Unity Church in Detroit, uh, about I have greatness in me, that there's something special in me. And I, and I started to listen to it enough, I actually, part of me believed it. And so I knew there was still hope. And she would give me books like Og Mandino, The Greatest Salesman in the World, Think and Grow Rich. I would listen back then, they were cassettes, but uh, Nightingale Pony, uh, Earl Nightingale, Lead the Field. And, and so I always knew somewhere deep in my mind that, I could have a different life. And so I moved through, through school. I did really well in school. School was my salvation. I poured myself into that. Uh, my dad was not a worker 40 years. He did the 40-40 plan. I knew that that's not what I wanted to do or wanted to have for my life. So school, I thought, was my ticket. Uh, study or what I thought was, uh, you know, ed education and study back then was my ticket out. I didn't realize till much later on that that was just uh, on a certain date at a certain time, if I could remember certain things, they would tell me how smart I am based on that result. And so that's not really, uh, that's not really studying. Uh, that's just a, you know, a test score at a certain time, right? That's not, you're not gaining knowledge, right? That you can apply and use in your life. And so I went through jobs. I worked for other people, I always got fired. And I decided I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I, I wanted to control my destiny. And yet I had this almost self-sabotaging uh, behavior. I would do well, start, stop, do well, start, stop. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't, and I was always very angry. I was always blaming other people for what happened to me. And it wasn't until, you know, my, my early forties, Larry, that I decided, you know what, I'm not going to keep going on like this. I am very disappointed where I was at in my life for who I knew myself to be and what I was capable of. And I said, it's time to, you know, either you're going to check out or check in. Right. And so I made a decision to check into my life and I'm like, I need to understand my thinking because my thinking has got me here. My thinking can get me out of here, but only if I understand the right thinking. So I came to know through my studying of Bob Proctor that there was a blueprint of how the top 3% of the people in the world think, act, and operate. Now, there's other people who are very successful, very wealthy, but they don't understand how they did it. They can't teach it. It's not duplicatable. So they're, they're what we call an unconscious company. I wanted to be able to teach this because my dream has always been, since I was in my teens, to teach and help people. I allowed outside influences my family, people that say teachers don't get paid enough money. You're so good in math. Why don't you do something in finance? And so I went and got an MBA and, and yeah, that's not what John wanted to do, but I, I did that numerous times over my life. And so 
a lot of your listeners I'm sure can relate to, to selling out your dream and goal mm-hmm. out of fear. And so I went into this, after the secret came out, I started uh, reading more, uh, thank you, grow rich again, after all these years. And I wanted to learn from Bob Proctor. So I set myself on a mission to learn from the man who spent 58 years teaching mindset. And I don't care what you want to do. If you don't have the right mindset, you will never fully be successful as far as what is possible. So I learned from Bob to understand that all based on universal law, I could be, do, and have whatever I want. And, and from that, that, that mindset, Larry, knowing that I could do that, I've been able to, we all have that one unique gift, that one unique talent. I've been able to, to, to pull mine out of me. Uh, I understand mindset. I went on and then wanted to learn and be mentored by Les Brown, who could teach me how to speak my message better than anyone on the planet. And then I finally figured out my true gift, which is the ability to, to help people build and create the relationships that they need to live the life of their dreams. And so how can I do that? Well, I, I'm a, just look at the, I can show them and demonstrate, here's how I know it works. You mentioned earlier, some of my clients, I, I traveled the world and been involved in business with Akon, with Les Brown, with Damon John, with Grant Cardone, with uh, um, you know, Sonia Riccati, with uh, Onyx Segal, Les Brown, I, I think I mentioned Les, but a lot of the top people, um, you know, billionaires and, and you know, sports legends and have stadiums named after them. So it's a, and I don't say that, to, you know me, I don't say that to show off, but to show you what's possible and everyone listening, that it doesn't matter where you came from, doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter where you're at today, we can change that moving forward. And I'm a testament to know that your Rolodex is high because of what you've done for me. I'm <laughs> just like, and that's a friend of 25, like to just, you're powerful and who you know. So that's a great thing. So there's a few questions because I was, you know, the things that you say and speak about a lot, I would love people to know. And that's like the million dollar DNA, right? Sure. How do you find that in you? Yeah, that's a great question, Larry. And it took me a long time because I was always searching. You know, one of the things a lot of my clients say is, I don't know my purpose. And I used to say that. I wonder what my purpose is. And I always think it's out there somewhere, right? Maybe it's that next book or that next seminar. We're going to get a, a scratch off, right, at the end. And it'll say, hey, John, here's your purpose, right? And I would keep going to all these seminars. I'd keep reading all these books. And yet there was always something missing there. And I realized that. And this came a lot through, through reading and understanding something Bob said, that the ability to you and I to look at each other right now on this interview, to have our cell phones, to fly all over the world, that knowledge has always been here. And so when you understand that everything's already here in one form or another, you realize that the only real challenge or issue in the world is, is ignorance in the sense of not knowing. It's an awareness issue. So now that you have the awareness to know you can, everything's already here, then you know that at our core, we are created in pure perfection, right? We're God's highest form of creation, spirit, universe, whatever you believe, but we're perfect. So all the answers are already here. And the answer to every single question is already inside of you. We just think that we need to ask other people for it because we've been so programmed to not trust ourselves, to not use our higher mental faculties, our intuition, our, the greatest gift we've ever been given that separates us from the animal kingdom, our imagination. So when I talk about that million dollar DNA, I just, you know, it's, other people call it your why, your purpose, your mission. It's that thing that's inside of you. That one unique thing that you do better than anyone else, Larry. And it's the one thing that I do better than anyone else. And we all have that one thing. Um, you know, there's only one Larry. There's only one Les Brown. There's only one Bob Proctor. And when you get to know them and you, they would never want you to be like them. They would want you to be like you and pass them at the grandstand, right? Be, and do and go further than they've gone. Yes. They've just been very good students, as you are and as I continue to be. And so that's, that's what, what I like to say it is, Larry, it's when you, have, when you understand your mindset and you can think your way into the results you want, when you then get clear on your messaging, what is it you want? Most people don't think. They'd rather die than think. So we don't really ask for what we want because we don't believe we can have it. So when you have the right mindset, when you have the right message, and then when you understand it's all about relationships and connecting, those three things, that's where they intersect. That is what I call the million dollar DNA. Yeah. And then you become unstoppable. And I was just about to ask you what the master of the three M's, because you say that too. That's a thing of yours. And Mind, mindset, message, and market. market. Yeah. Yeah. You basically said it just now, so I didn't even have to ask the question. It's so crazy because it's like you, uh, you speak, when you speak stuff, like if people actually open up their minds and just listen to what you're saying, it makes so much sense. It's just, 
I, I, I had to learn it the hard way, right? I didn't have somebody like you and Bob Proctor and Les Brown showing me the stuff I know now, but I had to learn it through getting beat up and realizing I still lived through it and I grew through it because I kept moving forward. I never let my doubt go through me. So, man, your stories, give me a story. Let me hear a story, man. Let me hear a story of something you've overcame with your mindsets because we've all had. Sure. I mean, I, I speak openly about uh, overcoming sexual abuse, drinking alcohol and, and starting doing drugs at age 12. Um, you know, what I realized is that I was trying to, to uh, and I went and, lived this out for decades looking for the answers to heal that pain or that what I thought was uh, the thing that was going to make John feel okay. So the biggest lesson I learned was I have to come to grips with accepting myself, uh, forgiving myself and forgiving those who have trespassed against me, right? Who've done things to me because all of that had to happen for me to be the person I am today. And so what I realized is that everyone does the best they can with the awareness that they have at that moment. So in each moment, if we can just accept what is, if we can find the lesson in that and then forgive all the rest, we can, we can keep moving in life and not allow our past to keep us stuck. Uh, we have these, I talk often, and you know, these, these paradigms, these mental habits and conditioning that keeps us stuck in the past. And so we have a self image, like a, almost like a GPS on a plane, which as we start to deviate from that, as we start to go to seminars, read and understand that we can actually maybe think new thoughts and have actually new results. And that's why people will go to seminars or they'll read books, go to seminars, get excited for a little bit. And then they'll come right back to where they were. They'll leave on Sunday, fired up. Uh, the, things are going to be different this time. By Thursday, they're back to doing the same old thing because they're not dealing with the, the challenges on a subconscious level. The majority of our life is already pre-programmed by, by the age of around seven. And so when we understand that we have subconscious mental habits that dictate how we act our life. We, we think because we have this conscious mind that we're, we have free will and we're, we're in control, but really it's, it's the programming. And that comes through uh, our parents, our environment, our friends and family, how we've been raised. And so it really comes down to understanding how can I let go of the past and move into a future that I want. And it comes with one understanding that you can program your mind. You can choose in every moment, a negative emotion, a negative habit, or a positive emotion. And that's why I say auto-suggestion works both ways. It's mm -hmm. happy, Larry. If you don't put positive stuff in there, it'll happily keep all that negative nonsense that's been there for years, right? So I always ask, what are you planting in the garden of your mind? Weeds are, are worth. And so when you understand that, uh, and where other people, most people get stuck, Larry, 90% of people will just go through life in, a, in, a, in mental bondage because they don't want to think. They don't think they don't have a very good self-image of themselves and know that they can actually uh, choose another thought. But the ones who do choose that other thought, they don't really, they think about it. Oh yeah, I would like my life to be different. Yes, I would like a million dollars. Yes, I would like that big house. And when you ask somebody what you want, you'll notice they'll always laugh after. That's that nervous laugh because they don't believe it. Yeah. Consciously, they would love to have it. Subconsciously, they don't believe it. And so then you get people who actually understand this work and realize that they can actually start to get emotionally involved in their dream, use their imagination, start to think from their wish fulfilled, live as Neville Goddard talks about, live from the end. We wanna to learn to move, not to somewhere, Larry, but from somewhere. And so we move from that place and live it in the, in the present. And I am statements. We do things like I've shared with you and you've done so well as uh, like creating our life script. And so when you, when you do that, you start to get emotionally involved in your idea and your dream, you write it down, you start recording it and listen to it, what happens? Now your body is in conflict, right? It's yeah. freaking out. And that's where people get all nervous, they get anxiety. And so we have to recognize, it's what we discussed this week, that the terror barrier, how do we trample the terror barrier? How do we get excited about our goals and dreams? And then that minute we're about to step out, break through that wall of fear. And that's where it come, the, the idea comes in that in every moment we have to choose fear or faith. Yes. Both of those require we believe in something we cannot see. So fear, and all the negative emotions that come with that cause nothing but worry, doubt, anxiety, uh, depression, depression, just anger turn inward, causes you to suppress your feelings, right? And then you have dis-ease and then you're in a state of disintegration. Whereas you can all, we have free will, right? So we can at any moment choose what we're going to do with that next thought that comes into our mind. And so we can choose to be in fully full faith. 
No, and how do we do that? With study and understanding. That's why I have all my clients, you know this very well, Larry, do the same thing, constant space repetition, every day, twice a day, for two weeks. Yes. So we start to reprogram that subconscious thinking. And we start to live in true faith. What is faith? It's the ability to see the invisible, right? It's the, the to believe in the incredible and then achieve what the, receive what the masses call impossible. It's not blind faith. It's unwavering faith in that belief that the things that you cannot see, Larry, hold the greatest miracles to life. Yes. And so when you're in that vibration of faith, knowing that life comes to you uh, easily, life doesn't have to be hard. You don't have to work hard. Uh, although one of my favorite songs was work hard, play hard. And I just like, you don't have to work hard. Everything can come with you uh, to you with ease. But when you're in that faith, you're in a state of well-being. You're happy, right? You're always happy, Larry, you're, because you have that unwavering faith. And you know that you have everything you already need to be and do everything you already, everything that you want. Yes. And so in, in faith, you're in creation. I got a question for you for, cause I see this a lot and we've talked about it in the groups a lot. When people are in that vibration and are doing good and positive, right? And then, you know, those thoughts start to come and it's the doubt and the debt and the spouse or the children starting to give you that. How do you get out of that? What's a good way? Yes, sir. I, I call it the committee, right? The committee. It's, uh, it's those negative mental habits. So what you have to realize is that you can't make other people wrong for where they're at. They just don't have the awareness that you do. So what can you do when you're in that? Things, and I see this a lot with my clients, things start to go really well. And they're like, I can see the mind thinking, hey, Larry, you got lucky, buddy. You're not going to be able to keep this up. You know, you, you know a couple things happened and they, they've all fell into place. So you were able to do this. But come on, Larry, this is not you. Get back to what you're doing. Get back to your tattoo shop and, you know, go back where it's comfortable. And that's where we have to have the awareness to know that we have this self-image that will try to pull us back to safety. And so with the awareness, we have to know that that's a false image. Yeah. So it's, it's, again, that constant repetition, Larry. It's waking up in the morning and, and doing prayer meditation, but then working on gratitude, right? The magic word is attitude. Great attitude, great results. How do you get a great attitude? You have to be grateful. Uh, I have all my clients, 10 things or people you're grateful for every morning. So by getting out of ourself and recognizing that number one is easy. It should be easy for everybody, Larry. You're looking at a piece of paper and you're holding something in your hand. Everything else is a bonus today, right? Yeah. It's a good day. So you, you have gratitude. Then you listen to your life script. You start to reinforce that new self-image of that I am a strong, powerful, successful entrepreneur I, I live the life of my dreams. You have to continue to remind yourself that you're sculpting and creating this new self-image. And I always go back to this story. I look at my phone, I look at these Zoom calls, I'm like, and, and even on an airplane, you know, Wilbur didn't get something in the mail, said, Orville, go slap these branches on your back and I'm gonna throw you off a cliff yeah. and we'll call you an airplane, right? Yeah. When, when you start to understand that everything's already here, it's always been here, then it's like, we can decide whatever we want and know that everything we need is already here in one form or another, right? Yeah. And, and, but that takes a lot of willpower. That's where we use our will, our, our ability to stay focused on one thing at a time. And most people don't want to use their higher mental faculties. They want to live from their five senses, right? Things we can see too, taste, touch, hear, and smell. Because that's how we've been programmed. If you can't see it, then it's, you know, it's not real. We don't believe it. So it comes down to also having the diagram and understanding of your mind. And most people, we all think in pictures. You ask somebody to tell them that they, you need to change your mind, your thinking. And you tell them they need to do that. They'll say, well, I don't know what the mind looks like. You know, most people will draw a brain, right? Larry? They'll say it looks like a brain. But that's not the mind at all. Mind is in every cell of the body. And mind is an activity. So we have the stick person. You've come to know the stick person where we understand that we have a conscious and subconscious mind at a very basic level. And the emotional mind, the subconscious mind is a moral it will act on whatever we plant in it. And so that's why we have to guard our thoughts every day. All right, we go, we go, you go to battle, right? Because we're bombarded by so much negativity out there. And guess what? We have just as much in here. Yeah. So we have to get rid of those old, old mental paradigms, those old mental habits and replace them with good ones. And so that's how you burst through the terror barrier. And guess what happens? You move through that terror barrier and we start the cycle all over again because now you, you are up at a new level where you've never been before. But life is about progress, right? So we're going to keep going, Larry. We're always striving to improve. The progressive realization of a worthy ideal, as Earl Nightingale says. That's what success is. And what is the great secret to success? 
visualize it. Seeing yourself and already having everything you want there. So I know a question that I've get a lot, right? Because I, I work with a lot of young entrepreneurs trying to start and they're always saying, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have the finances. I don't have the resources. Right. And I feel like that's the biggest downfall I had too, was I always thought to myself, I didn't have the money. What is it a mindset to change that? What, what helps them with that part? Because that's one thing I know is a big issue in life. Yep. And, uh, and that is a, a scarcity mindset. I know it very well, Larry, because I used to live it all the time, right? I'll do it when. And that's what, you know, we have goals. Bob talks about these A, B, and C type goals, right? A type goal, you go buy another car, Larry, you know how to do that. There's no real growth in that. A B type goal is just what you're talking about. I don't have it, but when this, this, and this line up, then I'll take the course. Then I'll, I'll leave my job and go become an entrepreneur. Yeah. Then I'll take that dream vacation, right? What happens? Like most people don't get all those things that line up and they give up. They go right back to what I call bondage. So how do you deal with that? You have to recognize you're either living in fear or living in faith. There's no in between. And so that fear is from a scarcity mindset. And that again goes to living from what you see. You see a low bank account. You see a lot of bills. You hear the debt collector calling you on the phone and you have to recognize the results that you are achieving now are in direct proportion to your thoughts. And because you're seeing debt or thinking that I need to, to lose weight or thinking that um, I have to, you know, I don't have the money, you, you attract what you think about, right? We become what we think about. All the philosophers, all the scientists, all, all religions, all disagree about every single thing except that one thing. We become what we think about. Yes. And so they all agree on that. And that's the only thing. So that's where you have to take that blind leap of faith, right? You have to have the faith to know that everything's already here that you will grow wings on the way down, right? I like to believe the wings are already there. They'll just, the, the dust will just come off them as you leap. And, and when you decide what you want, you have to get it if you follow certain things. It's based on universal law. So it's getting clear about what you want. Most people don't, don't know what they want, Larry. They don't ask because they don't believe they can have it. You're a perfect example of all that you've been through. You realize that you can still change your life by changing your thinking and create a life of your dreams. And you are on your, you're already the billionaire. You're, everything's created twice. So yeah. Larry is already a billionaire here. It just now is manifesting in the physical world. Yeah. So that, everything's created twice. So money's just a, 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 it's a piece of paper, right? It's just yeah. energy. It's a medium of exchange. To, and so when you, first of all, set a clear intention about what you want, you know, most people say, I don't have, but they don't know. They don't ever say, well, this is what I want. They focus on the negative, right? Yeah. Well, Rather than focus on get out of debt, focus on prosperity, financial abundance. Yes. And so again, Larry, it's as simple as some of the silly, you know, people call them silly, the little exercises I ask people to do. Most of that comes from a lack of self-confidence and a poor self-image. Yes. People stand in front of a mirror, read the self-confidence formula. For all your listeners, if you don't know it, look at it online uh, the, in Think and Grow Rich. There's the one page self-confidence formula. Stand in front of a mirror every morning and read that thing to yourself. Most people have a serious challenge and issue to do that, Larry, because we don't think very highly of ourselves, And so we have to really work on our self-image. And when you do that, you realize that you can be, do, and have whatever you want, Larry, that this is a movie. We can have fun doing it, right? We uh, we're the, need to lo know that we're the star of our own movie, the, the director, the writer, and the producer of our own movie. Yes. You're just an extra in mine as I'm an extra in your movie. And, and let's have fun, right? So I have a question for you on on groups and counsel courses and stuff, right? Like I'm in a group with you, right? Yep. How important is that? Cause I know how important it is, but I want you sure. to explain it to people. No, how if, important that is. If you haven't read Think and Go Rich, you guys, y'all want to get that book. And one of my favorite chapters is on the, the chapter on the master. Room. It is so important that you surround yourself with only quality people in the sense of get clear on where you're going and then surround yourself in a group of like-minded people who understand that they can think their way into the results that they want. So it's, it's important that you're with people who will understand the concept of creation, not competition. You know, all top athletes, if you really look and examine what they do, they don't compete against the other team. They compete against themselves to be the best version of themselves that they can be. So when we wake up, when I wake up every day, I work to be better than I was yesterday, be a better, be a better father, be a better partner, be a better friend, right? Be a better leader for my clients. And, and so, that's why it's so important you stay plugged in, Larry. And then when you have the creative mindset, 
you don't come from a place of where you want to keep your contacts to yourself, right? Because in, in the end, Larry, they're not mine. They're not my clients. We, yeah. we're all, we all came from somewhere. We're all going to transition to somewhere. And, and while we're here, we're all in this together. So we should treat each other as if we're the most important person on the world and the planet, right? Because to, to them, to us, we are. And that's how we should treat each other. Yes. But most people don't want to do that. So when you find people who are willing to understand that they can change the results by changing their thinking, Larry, you want to grab onto those people and, and make them part of your mastermind. Yes. Stay plugged in. That's why, you know, I have that accountability group on my phone. It's not a uh, to punish or make anyone feel bad exercise. It's an awareness exercise. Yes. Understanding by universal law, if you do things in a certain way, you will get the results you want. And it's, it's because what happens, Larry, like you said, the committee holds meetings daily. Yes, they right. Do. Our our goal, our mission is to make sure that you know we start to move those down to weekly, monthly, and then annually, and then they're just gone. But it takes time. But we have to replace that with the positive things. And so, when you're in a group and you hear other people sharing what they're going through, you are on our call Monday, you don't need to speak one on one with John. You can listen to what someone else is going through, and it can be most of the time it's more impactful, more yeah. powerful, because you're like, wow. You can see it from a different perspective, right? Our perception, another great gift that we've been given. Like, wow, I'm going through the same thing. Yes. And that's a big thing, going through the same thing and recognizing somebody else has already been through it or are going through it at that moment. And it just is just a simple flip of a switch to change that mindset. Yes. Man, John, you've already gave me so many nuggets that I don't even know how far to go with this. I really, I would love for you to give out information about yourself so people can get sure. I would, I would love to, Larry, if you guys want, I uh, actually have a free report you guys can get if you go to johntellerico.us, and I picked that website on purpose. It's us, because we're all in this together. So J-O-N-T-A-L-A-R-I-C-O dot U-S. I have a free report on there about the 10, 10 laws of, of networking. It's really, you guys, it's so important to understand that uh, a simple conversation, a, one connection can change your life. It changed my life. And so... What we need to understand is the first and most important connection is to ourself, to our heart, to our head, to what we want. Once you understand that in here, then you can go out there and build the, the right relationships that you need because we're here to help each other. We're here to create, right? We're here to rise and lift each other up and we're all in this together. So you go there and get that report. You guys can follow me on uh, Instagram, John Tellerico. You find me on Facebook as well. Larry, and then you can find me every Wednesday night with uh, my business partner and also my client, Les Brown. We do a power voice training every Wednesday. Um, Larry can get you guys information on that that he has and love to have you guys on that as well. I'll link all those in the bottom bio, bio of this so they can get all the information. I just wanted to let you talk it out too. Well, it was great having you, John. I was, it was an honor and a pleasure and I look forward to our meeting today, actually. Yeah, I look forward to it, Larry. I just want to say again, congratulations, Larry. It's, it's an Thank honor you. to have a client and student like you who's willing to do the work on a daily basis, who makes no excuses, who, who has come to the awareness that he knows he can live his life from the inside out, that he doesn't react to, to outside in influences or environment, but rather responds with, as that James Allen says, the calmness of mind, right? The true, true jewel of wisdom. And through when we, when we have self-control, over our feelings, our thoughts, and emotions, Larry. That is total freedom, knowing that each day is a great day. And then when you're on purpose, when you're on point, you wake up fired up and excited about life, where you want to, you're willing to die for what you believe in, right? And your purpose. You know, Dr. King knew, I'm sure, what was going to happen, but he was willing to give his life for that mission, that cause. Edmund Hillary knew that he was willing to die to go to the top of Mount Everest. We need to die to our purpose and our mission, and it doesn't necessarily mean physical death. It can be emotional and psychological death, that we need to let the past go. We need to let our stories go. Use those as fuel, as fire to move forward and be reborn, rebirth ourselves into our greatness. And so that's that's what I do, Larry. And, I, and when I get to see people like you doing it as well, it just, it makes this uh, worth it for me. So thank well, you so much for having hey, thank me. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by, man. I appreciate it. And uh, see you later on today. Yes, sir. Thanks, right. Larry. Have a good day.